Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Welcome, everyone, to the MC Variety Hour. This is Crawford this week doing a little tidbit with you about weird things I think about as I'm falling asleep. Uh, let me hurry up and get Miles boop, boop, in there. I don't want you guys to go too long without hearing her. Um, she's had another kind of crazy week. Um, if you listen to my tidbit, uh, what 420 I think it was yes I think that we talked about the history of 420 didn't we I uh, told you that her sister was uh, not doing very well health wise uh, so she's been back and forth to visit her sister in Minnesota which I just love saying it like that so which is who I am what I'm about in between that she uh, was out in Portland at a uh, convention I believe she's a sales lady so she does her thing at trade shows so she fit that in between what's been going on out there and so she's been on almost both coasts within the last two three weeks and she really misses podcasting and I know that she wishes that she could get in here and chit chat with everybody um, I know she's ready for that release so we miss Miles and I'll do my best to include her in our podcast today or my tidbit so today I kind of what I originally envisioned was this uh, wonderful little tidbit about how much I love basketball shorts on men. It's been getting warmer here in Ohio in the spring and summer, so you know everybody's breaking out the basketball shorts. And as a bartender, I've been seeing a lot of people with basketball shorts on coming in. Um, I just appreciate how they flow against the male form. And I know we talk about sexism a lot, blah blah blah. And this is a little bit of reverse sexism, but. I kind of wanted to do this little spot that reminded me of the Bud Light commercials, if all of you are old enough or know what I'm talking about, where uh, they would always celebrate real men of genius. Uh, And there was a gentleman singing a song behind it, you know, real American heroes, if you remember. Uh, And it was just the most silliest thing. And so I wanted to celebrate today the guy who invented basketball shorts. But when I was doing my research, I realized that, you know, the original basketball short was extremely short. It was uh, very high up and from the 70s is what I'm talking about when they wore the knee socks. I don't, I'm not a big fan of those. Those are a little bit too pervy for me. But uh, I do like the long flowy ones with the open by the knee. I mean, they're just... They're just easy access, I guess you could say. They're silky and, uh, um, okay, all right, anyways. So, 1980s legend Michael Jordan is actually credited for adding inches to the hemline. Um, before then, they just, he was always picking them out of his crotch, basically. I mean, who doesn't have, I know how that feels. Right up there in my camel toe. Damn it, get out of there. I like Wednesdays because I can wear those jeans where I have a camel toe and I just tell everybody it's hump day, I'm riding a camel. (laughs) I'm weird. What can I say? I know. That's not even funny. Uh, So, anyways, he he was always tugging his shorts out of his crotch and whatnot while playing defense. So, it wasn't too long before he was like, hey, let me get some extra inches on here. To kind of give you an idea of how much basketball shorts have changed, in seams from the 1960s to the present day went from 3 inches to a dramatic 11 inches. And today it isn't unusual for shorts to hang 4 inches or lower below the knee. The leg opening has widened as well, growing from 12 to 15 inches across. Some critics say the trends seem to be more about fashion than it is about function. Baggy and long is what people like. Before the 1990s, college basketball players were pulling their shorts down around their hips to lengthen them. Problem was, the jerseys wouldn't stay tucked in, so college students at the University of Michigan began to order shorts two or four inches longer. Players loved them, and the University of Michigan basketball team ordered all the shorts longer. Some were so long, down to about mid-shin. Holy crap, I mean, it's like a dress almost. (gasps) It's a long skirt. It's a skirt. I love it. And it just cracks me up. Some were so long that they had to be shortened. But a new trend was center line and other college teams began to run with them. So that's a little bit of information about basketball shorts. How much I love them. And a little bit of history about how they've gone from, you know, super short to super long. Almost like a squirt. <laughs> that's a dumb joke too. I have a lot of them. So you can go ahead and roll your eyes. Whatever. You're lucky I'm not doing puns. <laughs> oh, those are awful. I love them. Okay, thank you to Michael Jordan, I guess, is who I want to thank. 
Thank you for making basketball shorts or beginning the process of making the basketball short. Uh, how lovely it is and how much I enjoy it. They literally are a sunny spot in my day. I don't care what the face looks like on somebody as the basketball shorts. I just enjoy watching things flip-flop and a little butt in the back. And I know it's sexist and, you know, we talk about sexism and it's not cool. And reverse sexism probably isn't cool. So I probably shouldn't dedicate a tidbit to being sexist. But I just want all of you out there to know that uh, basketball shorts are my fetish. That's my fetish. And uh, I really enjoy watching you all wander around in them. Um, it's just uh, me taking pictures for my spank bank all day in the summer. You know what I mean? Gets me through the winter. Keeps me warm. Uh, I recently read a, <laughs> an article. This is, I'm switching topics, everybody, okay? Uh, about people who have died uh, while trying to take cool selfies. And I'm sure a couple of you have seen uh, or read headlines about like people falling off cliffs or trying something incredibly dangerous to get a really cool selfie and then slipping out the side of a cliff and falling to their death. Um, apparently it's becoming more and more common that it's death by selfie. And it kind of made me wonder, um, is that the new way that we're doing, uh, survivalism? <laughs> you know, like, survival of the fittest? Like, the dumb people are just killing themselves because they're taking pictures of themselves in dangerous situations that most people would probably know not to do? Uh, this kind of seems silly to me. I do have some, uh, statistics or uh, a little bit more information about death by selfie. And so I, I did some, a little bit of research or looked up a couple articles. Um, some of them were from a few years old. So I found one that was from, this article I found was from 2016. And it was talking about selfies that people have died. Uh, last year, in 2015 this would have been, some 24 billion selfies were uploaded to Google Photos. Here's some statistics and just a little bit of information on people dying by selfies. It's like the new Darwin Award. I love it. Uh, some 24 billion selfies were uploaded to Google Photos last year. Uh, this trend has been accompanied by a more tragic one. In 2014, 15 people died while taking a selfie. In 2015, that rose to 39. And in 2016, there were 73 deaths in the first eight months of the year. And this article is from 2016. I wasn't able to really find anything from 2017 to 2018. I'm sure it's risen since then. So some of this information that I've gathered is, comes from the work of Hemmack Lamba at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, um, which is in Pennsylvania here in the U.S., uh, and a few friends of his. So these people have studied the nature of selfie deaths and have begun the tricky task of finding a way to warn people when the process of taking a selfie could be dangerous. The work begins by assembling a data set of selfie deaths by scouring newspaper reports from around the world. Uh, a selfie death is described as a death of an individual or a group of people that could have been avoided had the individuals not been taking a selfie. To ensure that the reports are reputable, they look only at newspaper websites that are in the top 5,000 global sites ranked by Alexa or within, which if you're not familiar with, is Amazon's uh, version of Google's home, I don't know, but you know, or within the top 1,000 in a specific country. The earliest article reporting a selfie death that we were able to collect was published in March 2014. In this way, the team found 127 selfie deaths. Then they went through each report to determine the location, the reason for the death, and the number of people who died. And so that was able to build a small database of selfie death facts, which I think should be selfie dot one of that facts, but okay. It turns out that most of these deaths have been have occurred in India. 76 of them, more than half of the total, and a number that dwarfs the death toll in other countries. The next highest were nine deaths in Pakistan, eight in the U.S., and six in Russia. So, uh, look at us, U.S. We're not the worst at killing ourselves over being vain and stupid. That's amazing. So, they almost found the most common cause of death was falling from a height. This reflects the penchant for people taking selfies at the edge of cliffs, at the top of tall structures, so on. You know, uh, like planking on a bridge that spans over a ravine. Come on, people. Uh, water also accounts for a large number of deaths. Uh, a number of them involve water and heights, things like jumping into the sea from a height and so on. So 
Uh, you definitely don't want to be taking a selfie when you're either going to plunge off a cliff or into some deep ass water, folks. Uh, kind of seems like common sense, but I guess I'm wrong. In India, though, trains feature significantly as a cause of selfie death. Uh, and this is a quote. This trend caters to the belief that posing on or next to a train track with their best friend is regarded as romantic and a sign of never-ending friendship. Another feature is a significant proportion of selfie deaths in the U.S. and Russia caused by weapons. This might be a consequence of the open gun laws in both the countries. So then what they try to do is they attempt to identify signs that could indicate that a selfie may be risky. Their goal is to build an app that warns people if selfie deaths have occurred nearby or if the selfie activity might otherwise be risky. See, now we gotta stop padding things. You know, uh, this is why dumb people get to breed and it dilutes our gene pool is because we try to make everything idiot proof. If you need an app to tell you that you shouldn't be standing dangerously close to the edge of a cliff just for a fucking picture, maybe you should fall off the edge of that cliff. And I know that's harsh, but you know what? I I'm getting real tired of dumb people. Um, but anyways, not really a whole lot in the news this week, is there? Oh, just kidding. Who's excited for Trump to get the Nobel Peace Prize, huh? That's definitely something that he needs and, uh, won't lord over anybody anytime soon. I feel like the Nobel Peace Prize has lost its meaning in the last, oh, I don't know, 15 years or so. It's kind of like just giving out a participation trophy, like, hey, you tried. You know, they used to award that to people who really really uh, made a difference or changed the world in some way and now it just seems like we're not accomplishing anything really great so now we're rewarding people that award for mediocre bullshit that they do and um, I'm not saying that peace between North and South Korea isn't a big deal but uh, I, I think that we all kind of figured that eventually it would have to happen you know uh, they weren't going to continue to go through war and I have read the newspaper articles and I just don't see that, I don't know, to me I don't think that Trump is an excellent peacemaker. I think that there's probably something financially involved or a benefit or I'm sure that there's some deal workings in the background that suddenly North and South Korea want to talk because uh, how many other presidents before Trump tried it? Uh, one way or their own way and got no progress, but Trump, who is a foul-mouthed, ridiculous person, somehow was able to get them to come to the table. So to me, I don't think it has anything to do with him negotiating peace. I'm sure that there's a business deal behind it that uh, benefits all three, like Trump and North and South Korea, that is encouraging them, especially with uh, South Korea's president saying that he should be nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. That's just out of character, in my opinion, for South, uh, South Korea. Uh, but anyways, everybody, that's about all I have for this week. Um, just a quick update. Hopefully we'll have a new episode out for you here soon on um, Miles will be back to tell you guys, tell you guys all about how other people are major assholes and also catch up with us on everything that's been going on or crazy life lately. Uh, I talked to her about her little kitties that we talked about. She's found homes for them. They're all doing really well. She's holding up as well as she can. I mean, I don't know how she handles, you know, all of this. It's been very stressful with her sister and she's traveling. She's got a family. So... I really miss uh, the M in my MC Variety Hour, guys, if you can't tell. But uh, I hope you guys have a good week. Looking forward to some good weather. I hope you guys are, too. I don't know where you everybody's from, but uh, let me know. And uh, if you want, give us, send us out a tweet. Go ahead and uh, tweet to us on Twitter.com or let us know uh, what you think we should talk about in our next podcast. Anything that we left on and we haven't come back to yet that you'd like to hear more about or... Uh, just some ideas. You know, I do like to put those polls up on Twitter that say, uh, you know, pick three out of these four topics and we'll tie them all together. Um, perhaps later today I'll put a poll out and see what you guys think because it seems like those are fun and people enjoy what we end up tying, how we're able to tie, like, the history of Doctor Who riding a bear while he's drinking beer. Uh, eating tacos. I don't know. But I had a good time with that one. So hopefully we'll do something like that again. I know we have a, a couple of uh, serious podcasts that we'll be working in. So it'll probably be like an every other thing. We try to give you a little bit of everything because this is a variety hour. Usually this is the part where Miles would say, okay, everybody, don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Check us out on Facebook. We're on Libsyn, Podbean, um, Spotify, Apple iTunes, Google Play. Uh, did I say Podbean? I probably did. We are on just about every streaming 
platform that you could possibly think of. Um, Stitcher Radio and then uh, SoundCloud. Uh, we have our own website, milesandcrawford.com, where we, I don't keep up on it as much as I should, but um, you can find all of our past episodes on there. You can read, sometimes we have written blogs on there. We kind of talk about our thoughts and feelings, things that uh, we don't always get to in the podcast. And, uh, you know, just talk back to us. Our shout outs this week, I don't have a whole lot. I know that Miles has really wanted to talk about the No Phony Network, who's been really great to us. Um, we're getting uh, a little bit more fans. We're getting a little bit more listens. So it's been really great connecting with the podcast community. Uh, it's a very kind community. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they, they're all about each other's success. And it doesn't even matter if you're in the same category, if they even listen to your podcast or not. Um, it's, a, it's a very, let's make each other successful community for the most part. Um, and I'm really glad that we got into this a year ago, even though, you know, we're still trying to find our way and, and break through and get a little bit more lessons and, and maybe get this thing to take off eventually. So anyways, uh, bleh. tune in next week for what will hopefully be a full episode. If not, you'll probably hear me doing another tidbit. Uh, maybe I'll talk about how much I love basketball shorts again. And uh, I do. I really do, guys. You have no idea. I live for summer. All right. Well, have a great afternoon. I'll see you guys later. Bye.